Hello, everyone, um, and welcome to the first day of the Breakthrough Festival. Yay. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Um, I'm actually going to hand it over to Liz from 500 Women Scientists to get us started and tell us why we're here. Hi, everybody. I'm Liz McCullough with my special guests, Addie and Layla. Uh, Addie will be drawing, hopefully, with us today. Uh, Layla will not. But uh, I am with the organization Five and Women Scientists, and our goal is to make science more open, inclusive, and accessible. And one of the main projects that relates most to what we're doing today, and we'll tell you more about all our other projects throughout the week, is uh, something called SciMom Journey. And essentially, we're trying to fight some of the inequities in science related to being a mom and uh, one of the barriers then to having science be accessible and equitable for everybody. So as we all know, being a mom in science is really tough. Uh, so you can follow us along with our SciMom journeys to check out all the different efforts that we're doing around that. And I hope that you get to join in today with some of your kiddos to have some fun drawing some dinosaurs with us. Um, so we are here to celebrate paleo art and uh, Liz and I are both moms. So you will see and hear our kids around because that's part of what we're doing is bring our kids into the science that we're doing every day. So um, the Breakthrough Festival is um, kind of focused on a film series that Science Friday produced called Breakthrough, um, Portraits of Women in Science. And it is a short film on anthology from Science Friday and the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. And it follows women who are working at the forefront of each of their fields. So each episode um, features a different woman scientist and blends both their personal stories of their journeys in science with the innovative science and research that they're doing. So today we're kind of focused on the work of um, a paleontologist that we'll hear about later named Jing Mai O'Connor. But what we wanna do first is think about dinosaurs. Um, and Diana's gonna share some pictures with us. She's our producer behind the screen, so she's gonna be talking to you in the chat. Um, and if you haven't shared where you're tuning in from, please let us know where we're hearing from you um, and where you're joining from across the country. I see we have some people from Colorado Springs, Orlando, Florida. Um, so we're so excited to do some dino drawings with you. But the first question was, what are some of your favorite dinosaurs from books, from movies, from TV? Um, we all have some, and here are some of our favorites. So Rex from Toy Story, that might be a dinosaur that you've seen or heard. Um, another dinosaur you might have seen and heard is Barney, Baby Bop and Riff, especially if you're a 90s baby, this might be something very familiar to you. Um, a couple other dinosaurs, uh, Blue from Jurassic World, a Velociraptor. Um, and also Tiny, Shiny, Dawn, and Buddy from Dinosaur Train. So all around us, dinosaurs have really captured our imagination. They're, they're seemingly larger than life. And we think, what do they look like? And how do we know what they look like? Um, and so what we wanna do is take a moment and we're gonna give you a couple minutes to take your crayons, your markers, your colored pencils, and a piece of paper and create a drawing of a dinosaur. So everyone with your markers, your paper, um, you're going to create a drawing of a dinosaur. Addie, you ready? You got your markers? You wanna show them? Okay, should we draw? Um, and one of the things that is really cool about drawing in uh, science is that a lot of our drawings help us, wow, <laughs> that is an amazing drawing. Um, a lot of uh, our drawings help us take what we see in the numbers and maybe the bones and think about how they look. So a lot of the people who do that for us are called paleo artists. Um, and paleo artists help us visualize what our paleontologists are seeing in the field. I see some awesome drawings happening. OK, 
Okay, you want to do yours? I want you to help me. Okay, I'll help you. Good, you start. And while you're drawing, one of the things you can share in the chat mm -hmm. is some of the names of your favorite dinosaurs, if you're here. Can you help me? Yeah. Can you guys help Addie? What kind of things do dinosaurs have that she should know? Mm. So I uh, have feet and hands. Well, claws, talons. I don't know what you call that. Definitely claws. One of the hardest things to draw, I think, are scales. But I know that dinosaurs have <laughs> scales. I usually do it with like some bumpy lines and some circles. Okay, and we can all share our drawings. So we're gonna do a before and then we're gonna do an after drawing. So we're gonna work on these throughout our time. I don't know, should we add different colors to our dinosaur drawings? Yeah, what color are your dinosaurs? Mm. Yeah, you have blue on your shirt. That's a blue dinosaur. That's right. Christy Taylor says teeth. Oh, <gasps> uh, mm -hmm. I haven't added any teeth yet. I think mine have teeth. Sometimes I always go for the clothed mouth strategy. <laughs> I don't know how to quite draw teeth. I'll admit, I drew another dinosaur ahead of time, and I got some. I got some. Ooh. Dino teeth here. Uh, this is this was my first go. Ooh, I like the scales yeah. at the top. I decided to give him person or them personality, um, and then this is my <laughs> this is my current one. Ooh, Liz, I really like what you all have come up with. So wow. Whoa! That is so cool. It's like a, it's like a triceratops. I like him. Yeah, like we tried to do our trick. Oh, nice. nice. So there are lots of different kinds of dinosaurs. Um, and we know a lot of them because we've seen them on TV or we've gone to a museum and we've seen them. Um, and so we have a lot of different types. We have theropods, we have sauropods, we have seropods. Um, and what do we really know about them and how do we know those things? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our first drawings. And a lot of times in science, what we do is we take what we already know. You all know a lot about dinosaurs in your drawings. Um, and you put tails, you put teeth, you put claws, you put feet. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn a little bit more and then we're gonna go back to our drawings and see what we can add um, and add the things that we learned. So how do we know what we know? So actually let's meet our expert and I wanna introduce you all to Jing Mai O'Connor, but I'm gonna let her talk for herself from her video. It was less a biological science than it has become in these days. And it's amazing because now we have all these new ways of studying dinosaurs. It's no longer just like manly men who go to the field and dig, you know, now you have like, you know, girls like me. My name is Jingmei O'Connor and I'm a vertebrate paleontologist who specializes in the study of Mesozoic birds from the age of dinosaurs. So that's our expert today, Jing Mai O'Connor, and she is a vertebrate paleontologist. So she studies what dinosaurs were like, and actually her specialty, ooh, Addie, I love the spots you added. Um, she specializes in studying Cretaceous birds um, or Cretaceous dinosaurs. So um, one of the cool things is that we know that birds are dinosaurs. So we have dinosaurs walking around every day. Um, and so one of the things we should think about is what do birds have that we might include in our drawings as well. So, um, let, but let's look at this fossil right here. 
Um, and what I want to notice is, or what I want to think about is, take take a deep look at this drawing. What do you notice, and what do you wonder? Let us know in the chat. Do you see something? What do you see on that? Dinosaur. Yeah, it's a dinosaur. What does it have? What do you see? Tail. Yeah, it's got a long tail. What else do you see? Hand. Yeah, it has a hand. What does that make you wonder? What about its tail? Do you have a tail? No. Do birds have tails? What else do birds have? Mouth is. Yeah, they have beaks. That's right. So we have somebody sharing its color, right? So we can see coloration on here. So that's a really cool noticing um, because one of the things that we have now that technology has moved forward is fossils, we can start to get things that are better preserved. And so how do we know what skin of dinosaur looks like? How do we know they have feathers? We have these really cool fossils. And if you look at this micro raptor, this is called a micro raptor. If you look at it, you can see this little frilly brown line on the, on the edges. And what paleontologists have figured out is that those are feathers. So we were looking at these fossils of early dinosaurs and we're like, whoa, what is going on? I think I see feathers. I think I see scales. And so we can take that new data of feathers and scales and we can start integrating that into what we know about dinosaurs. Um, what I want to do now is look at another video from Jingmai where she's going to tell us um, about something else she noticed when she looked at fossils of dinosaurs. Here we have a bird called Jehoanus prima, which lived about 120 million years ago. And actually, this is my favorite early Cretaceous bird. Now, the most challenging thing about this specimen is that it has this extremely elongate tail. And this is weird because all living birds, the bony part of the tail is very short. We would expect evolution to be moving in that direction. And I thought it has feathers along the entire length of the tail. So it also would have created drag, meaning it would resist your ability to fly. It was one of these weird mysteries of avian evolution until we identified eight specimens that preserved the feathers. We actually found that the tail feathers had been reduced. So you no longer had feathers along the entire length of the tail. You only had feathers in two patches. It doesn't look like it has a lot of aerodynamic properties. However, if you make the tail longer, you're actually making the tail more effective as a stabilizer during flight. So the elongated tail in Jehornis actually allowed it to fly better. We just couldn't tell that until we had soft tissue preserved. So one of the cool things that she's talking about in this video, she talked about this tail they found. Um, and one thing I love about science is they didn't find one fossil, they found eight fossils. And after they looked at all eight, they were able to kind of confirm or, or think more clearly and think more surely about what they found. Um, and I know that Liz and Addie, Addie, you had mentioned tails um, and a couple other people in the chat have mentioned tails. Nydia, you mentioned tails. Um, and this is a really cool thing that we noticed. And there is a new drawing. And what do we see? A tail and it's got some feathers on it. So if you want to, um, if it makes sense with the dinosaur that you've drawn, how would you change your drawing a little bit? So take a little bit of time, go to your drawing. We've talked about a couple of things with dinosaurs and see what you can add or change about your drawing based on what you know. Knees pink. I always think what do what she mentioned is soft tissue, right? So having muscles and other things besides just bones tells us a lot of things, right? Because if we're just looking at skeletons, we're missing the whole body and all the color and other things that everyone talked about. So I think that's the really interesting part for me. I'm a yeah. scientist too, so I love I that. think about these things. 
It's it's cool that you mentioned that, Liz, because I also, um, in reading a lot about dinosaurs this week and looking at Jingwei's research, um, it's just really, really amazing how we've gotten better over time at making sure that we're not just chipping down to the bone level in our fossils, that we're actually like looking at the surroundings and taking it in. And that's one of the cool things about science. That's one of the things I love about being in science is that our understandings change over time. Things we thought we knew, things we thought were set. I mean, I imagine paleontologists from the 1960s being very surprised with the drawings and the things that we know about dinosaurs right now, um, which is why we keep becoming scientists and we keep studying and we keep questioning. Um, one thing that's always cool to share are your open questions because that's the essence of science. What are the things that we still don't know and what are the things we're still learning? Um, and I also wanted to share, um, we have a clip of a paleo artist actually animated what they think based on the muscle structure and soft tissue a micro raptor actually looks like um, and our producer Diana I think can share that video with us right now and we'll watch that one more video before we really go back to our drawings so this was the fossil that was taken or uh, this is the fossil that we're looking at and this was the depiction that a paleo artist made of what that fossil would actually look like once they had all their musculature and once they had all their feathers. Um, and what are some of the things that you can see? What are some of the things that you notice and that you wonder about these two images? Well, and I think what Zochi brought up so well is most of science and especially a lot of the big breakthroughs come from observation which anyone can do, right? So anyone can be a scientist if you just look at your world and see what you see and make some notes about that and think about things, observe things. And these guys are some of the best scientists out there because so much of their world is just experiencing things for the first time, right? So listening to our kids, I think we can learn a lot about our environment too. Yeah. Ooh, I love that addition. Um, and you can always share your drawings with us. We're very curious about how you're changing and moving your drawings. So if you share them on social with the hashtag kids paleo art, um, we can see how your drawings are changing over time. And I see a really cool drawing here of multicolors, um, somebody adding a lot of coloring to our dinosaurs. Um, and we can see some of that multicolors, um, somebody adding a lot. Sorry, that was me twice. Um, so another thing that I started to add, and I'm not, not the best artist, you can kind of see like Addy, I added some tail feathers on the end. Um, I love the spine that you've just added to the middle. Um, so I think we have, we've learned about Jill Hornus. We've learned about a couple other dinosaurs. Um, what are your favorite dinosaurs that you see in the museum? Um, so share your favorite dinosaurs. Um, I do love a T-Rex. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm a little little in love with that. But I was going to say that one of the other dinosaurs that I really, really, really loved was the Iguanodon um, when I heard about it. And its name, Iguana, seems like it should be a reptile, right? But we've changed our understanding and we kind of know that dinosaurs, a lot of dinosaurs are more closely related to birds. Um, and birds came down that chain and they are dinosaurs in fact. So one of the things I wanted to talk about was this idea of why. And we have a picture of two different organisms that live today. Um, one of them is a crocodile and one of them is a rooster. What do you notice about the way they're standing? Addie, how many legs is the rooster standing on? Two. Two, yeah. How many legs is that alligator crocodile standing on? Two. Is it two? 
three. Oh, maybe three. You can see three in that picture. That's right. So that's a really cool observation. So one of the things that we know about dinosaurs is that dinosaurs generally have an upright stance. Their, their body weight is oriented above their legs. Um, and that's very different from how reptiles are oriented with their legs sort of on the side, sort of sprawled. So one of the things we know is a common trait of a lot of dinosaurs is that they're sort of in that T-Rex pose. They're sort of standing up like my earrings, um, um, standing upright. So that's a cool thing that we figured out. And we did that based on the bones of the pelvis of that dinosaur. Um, and so we've learned a lot of things about that dinosaur like the iguanodon. It's not, it's not standing in the way that we would see a crocodile standing with that sprawl. It's standing more upright in nature. So that's another thing that we know about mo like our modern notions of what dinosaurs are. That's another thing that we know. Um, and a couple people are sharing their favorite dinosaurs in the chat. So if you want to join in on the fun in the chat and share your dinosaur. But um, I think that we have... Um, one more image or video that we'd like to show to give us some more ideas about what dinosaurs are um, and what they have. And I wanna go back to that micro raptor idea that we saw at the beginning. We saw that small fossil um, and that fossil is really cool because that fossil helped change our notions about dinosaurs. A lot of times we thought dinosaurs were huge, big, larger than life. Um, and now we kind of know that dinosaurs range in size. There's huge dinosaurs, there's small dinosaurs. Um, and we see a lot of those small dinosaurs outdoors. So we're gonna play one more video from Jing Mai and she's gonna tell us one more thing that she noticed about dinosaurs or Cretaceous birds. When I first look at a new specimen, you look over for what is unique about that specimen and how does it fit in with a larger picture of evolution. Some specimens have something very striking about them that it just jumps out. For example, I had a Microraptor. It's actually kind of an ugly specimen. The bones are very badly preserved. But the reason that this specimen is very cool is because it preserves bird inside the stomach. So this tells us Microraptor caught this bird and just basically gulped it down whole. So, so that is a Microraptor and you saw from the fossil, it's actually pretty small. Um, what are some questions you have? What are some observations you have? And actually, um, I wonder, well, we have a couple minutes left, but um, what are some things that you noticed? And while we're doing that, we're gonna spend the last couple minutes adding to our drawing. So I'm gonna add some feathers to my drawing here. Um, and making at the end, after all the things we've seen, after all the things we look through, I love those feathers on there and the patterns. So cool. Um, and I wanna see what everybody else has created. So make sure you share with us. Um, and it's hashtag kids paleo art. Um, and you can share that on social media and we can see what you created. And if you have a before and an after, that's cool. Um, but we're gonna take a couple minutes to draw and think about all the things that we learned about dinosaurs today that may not be what we knew going in. Um, and this is one of the cool parts is revising our ideas over time. So based on new information we get, we revise or we change what we thought. And it might be just adding new information on top of what we know to have a better understanding of the world. And that's what science is all about. So, yeah, Michelle brings up the great point that that dinosaur is very, very, very tiny, right? So, so much smaller than we think yeah. of. Or, the or my favorite dinosaur, which is a brontosaurus. I might actually say that my drawing is life-sized actually now. This is a life-size drawing of my dinosaur. It is only as big as my hand. It's tiny. Not yet. Oh, not yet. 
We have another dinosaur here. It's getting very, very fuzzy. Ooh, nice. Fuzzy from its feathers. That is fuzzy from its, <laughs> I don't know what happened to this dinosaur. It's got great color. <laughs> I'm going to add a little fuzzy area to my drawing as well. And I noticed that Diana, who's drawing in the background, also added sort of a fuzzy layer on the outside. Diana's dinosaur has some great teeth, too. I don't think I have the skill to draw those teeth. Yeah. Whoa, I like the wing, the wings on the side and on the arms. I feel like we forget nice. a lot of them maybe you know, couldn't fly, but they may still have had feathers yeah, on their arms. My Disney? Very cool. I have to say, the drawing skills are quite amazing. Um, a couple things before we close for today, because we're at the end of our time. One, keep drawing dinosaurs. I want everybody to spend as much time as you want drawing dinosaurs. There's so many cool dinosaurs. Um, there are thousands of birds, but next time you go outside and you look at a bird, look at how they walk, look at their features, and kind of think about how they've changed and how they're different from their ancestors and how those things have changed over time. It's a cool thing that we can do looking outside our windows or walking on the street is look at our modern day dinosaurs. Um, and a way to start learning to draw dinosaurs, um, we have a really cool science Friday video from a paleo artist. Um, that's all about how he became a paleo artist and how he learned to draw. Um, but my biggest advice for drawing, and I'm not the, the most adept drawer, is start with shapes. So if you think about their bones, how their bones lay out, just draw that first, then draw a circle, then draw a square, and then start to outline your dinosaur. It's a really cool way to think about it is our torsos, are these sort of oval shapes, our heads are these squares. Um, and that's how we can start to think about simply putting together a dinosaur. But um, a couple things there are, um, if you are curious about how dinosaurs walked and that concept, we have, if you have a brother or sister or you are in middle school, we have a resource all about how we walked versus how dinosaurs walked. And you can figure out how they used to walk around based on looking at the shape of their pelvis, which we have some really cool models for you to look at there. Um, and keep sciencing, keep observing, keep noticing and wondering about the world. Um, and I'm very excited about all the future scientists that joined us today. Um, just I would also say, especially for a three-year-old, um, Annie loves to trace right now. So giving lots of pictures of dinosaurs that they can trace, and then they'll get better and better at being able to draw them themselves. Hey, I'm making so. letters for my dog. Yeah, she's starting to draw some letters now, too. Annie traced my dinosaur that we just drew. So she got lots of practice doing that. Awesome. Well, Liz, Addie, thanks for joining me. Um, I'm Sochi Garcia from Science Friday. This was, Liz, you want to uh, sign off? Um, yes. And thanks for scientists. <laughs>